Uh, bad point. Bad, bad point. point. Yeah. Bad point. Um, let me. S this is a rare time. I didn't just have mouse spots. Open. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, mouse yeah. technically now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we don't call them that anymore. Excuse. Yeah, they don't. Um, they don't go by that name anymore. Yeah. Un I mean, unfortunate. Okay, I'll just put it like this. With all the rumors that are circulating around Mao's and how the team seems to be soon to be torn asunder, I feel like it's pretty obvious that there is a very short life expectancy left on this team. And if they don't get if they don't get their shit together, they're just obviously not going to stay together as a five man unit. <clears throat> There's rumors right now that multiple of their players are being approached by tier other tier one organizations. Uh, and that they they likely will be headed into other directions. Uh, I'm not going to give any de further details about that because I, I'm i not certain of the details, nor do I want to be someone that's a leaker. I'm not a leaker. Uh, so I, I, but, and so, but I think that one thing that would keep this team together, if there is still any chance at all, is proof of concept in winning on a big stage. And I feel like the Blast World Finals was their last chance. I know that some people might say right now, oh, what about the RMR? What about the Major? If you're telling me right now that they were able to play well at Rio in front of a hostile crowd against Furia, who's a team that's clearly worse than them, that's impressive. If they were able to beat Vitality on the quarterfinal stage, that's impressive. Losing in the grand finals to Na'Vi, that needed to be something that they built off of going into the World Finals, which actually had a crowd that on the day that they played Vitality, I think the crowd in Singapore was probably louder than what they played in the quarterfinals against Vitality because my Brazilian crowd not playing with my Brazilian teams. So I, I do feel like Maus have missed that window of opportunity. They lost in the quarterfinals to a Vitality team that was playing with Jax, who was clearly weaker, by the way. Like, that was a clearly weaker version of Vitality than I had seen in the past when they had Mezzi, who fit much more adequately in the role. And now, if you're going to tell me that, for whatever reason, Maus are going to get it together for the Major and the playoffs of the Major in what they probably recognize themselves is their own last dance, I am going to tell you you're, you're absolutely crazy, and that's not going to happen. And at this point... Maus didn't get it together, and and that's my bad point. Uh, Maus have failed to win a true S tier arena trophy in the time that they had with this roster, which I so highly touted, and I still hold out in a lot of ways that if they put it together, they would have been on the precipice of having one of the best teams and perhaps most dominant runs for quite some time because it feels like I see flaws with every other team, but. For whatever reason, what it is with Maus is that when they play with a modicum of pressure, they crumble and multiple players on their team will suddenly just play 70% as good as they are capable of doing. And I'm even being generous there because people like Ian Patton and Exertion now have proven to me repeatedly that they are unable uh, to to show any any sense of what they have in a group stage in a playoff match, which is so disappointing, obviously. And so uh, this was not a good time for Maus to, for actually this was not a good time for Torzi to have his worst event of the year because this felt like you needed to build off of what Rio showed you're capable of in front of an arena. And so yeah, unfortunately Torzi has the one like Torzi gets a lot of flack, and this is the one time where he was deserved for this tournament. But for most of the year, it's actually been his riflers who have let him down in these big stage games. So. Yeah, uh, the bad point is simply Maus didn't get there, and 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 this is almost like this is almost like a swan song for them now for me. Go on, where are you going, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I don't. It, it's hard because like it, you're you're completely right. This is a team where it's like every single piece from the IJL to the Opera to the Rifling Core to the you know to the coacher. Like this team could have been a tier one championship title contender, and they just didn't really make it to that you know to that finish line and there's like a, i there's i mean there's a lot of teams i mean there's previous iterations of mouse that are you know like that have been exactly like this and i i think i don't i, I can't dispute the point at all that they've come so close and they've just missed the mark every single time um and i i don't think they'll do anything at the major especially knowing that they know changes are going to be coming to line up that they know they didn't overcome their mental issues that they can't go and say you know well, we fixed our issue. Let's have one last good ride. They're like the issue still exists. So, and 
the team's gonna be definitely pulled, you know, definitely pulled apart in 2025. It's it's effectively you know it's effectively over for this for this iteration of Mouse Birds. They're gonna have to go back to the well and probably try with you know two or three new academy players next year, and that's just kind of the reality of being the Mouse Sports organization. Yeah, I will say on this one, this is why I told people like. I think it was even one of my takes on a past episode. Not only will this be their last season, like this major is basically do or die. And spoiler right now, it doesn't look like they're going to win it. But beyond that even, it's going to be the last anyway, just because this is where fans will always misunderstand. I actually do believe all that mouse spot shit. Like they do look like they get along very well. They look like they all are of a similar mind. and so. But that doesn't matter when it comes to things like someone being able to pay you twice as much salary, someone being able to put you next to one of those HLTV top three or four players in the world. Basically, by the way, it's the reason why everyone has done that jump from Mouse to Faze. Every single time it happened, if you remember, Mouse was usually a comparable team to Faze at the time. It wasn't that far off. But the difference is, the perception if you go to a Faze or a Vitality G2 is you will win tournaments. In Mouse, that's not guaranteed. Even if with this lineup, it's not guaranteed. So unfortunately, for every reason, you don't stay if you're the big name. The Infat Exertion are the obvious ones, but Shuhi as well could easily go. I think for people like Torji and Brawland, this might be the place they stay and they get built around again. They're not as obvious people to pick up elsewhere but look if you've got three major pieces that are almost certainly remember as well as soon as one goes why don't the other two go you know what i mean that's the sort of thing where if you stay it has to be like what ents could have done you all have to agree to stay like it can't just be like some pies and nuts stay. it has to be like snappy staying as in fact the whole lineup stay and the coaches stay and sourced it you know so for me i do think it's obvious is the last one and the sad thing is i see why he picked it as the bad point they're not going to get there as of right now i i could i could actually for real bet that they won't win the major because what this team has shown me, unfortunately, is almost every time, almost every time it is the match, the one that if they win will get them the status they deserve, they don't win it. That's why the only time they even beat opponents of that level were the smaller lands. So even though like, they beat the right team, it wasn't the right setting, wasn't the right stage, wasn't the right venue. So unfortunately, this is a team where, like, essentially, they're almost like the playoff version of what I just said about Liquid. They're always getting in these games. They're always so close. They always think before the game, hey, it's possible they could win this one. But this is the team, like, with the exception, actually, of that Rio event recently, you just know they'll lose the semi against anyone that's good. Any top, top team, they're not going to do the big upset and pull it off against, like, G2 in the big semifinal. They're going to lose to a G2 in the semifinal, and they're even going to do it where it's like, oh, we were close we won map one and it's like which is like the refrain of the loser by the way like you don't give a fuck at the end of the day it's only winning the match that you care about you don't even care if you win your map you just want to win the series and then I will say also the last thing which is a bomber to me is the other reason why I don't think they'll ever get over the hump is I actually do think they have too few veteran players like, their veteran is Brolan. Like, remember, Shuhi himself is an experience. Like, he's, he still hasn't been through all the fucking possible scenarios of what it's like to be up a map, down a map, in the big game, call a time. He, he's still learning on the job himself. So I think when you add it all together, in isolation, each player could all play for a top five team. I mean, the joke is they are a top five team themselves. But I do think, like, the blend wasn't perfect in that sense. Like, I do think people ignore that, like, when you look at some of the other teams, like, when everyone compares this team to Astralis or TSM, TSM got like two or three years to get to the top. This team had to do it within this year. And that's not the economics of the industry anymore. You're not going to get three years. So unfortunately, this mouse lineup probably never going to go further than they have now. You win small events. But I would say the limit for them is probably semis at the major. And by the way, semis at the major is not going to keep everyone together. So I agree. I agree also that's a bad point, by the way. One, it's just a bomber because like the aforementioned TSM Astralis, you can see the potential. This team, by the way, really could have won every single event this year. They could have won the major. They could have won Cologne. They didn't because they always fail in the big moment. And then sadly, I also do think the bomber is if this was like traditional sports what we would say is you want peace away you know next year everyone proves you won't get an next year it's not the CS economy right now and so I think for next year I could see almost the whole team being strip mined out it just looks like it's plausible and I think that's fine I mean I think that's fine. yeah it's like, all I'm good not, I'm not by the way in I, some ways team. as much as I'll be sad when this lineup dies it all will also make all those other teams better like who wouldn't like to see phase with like exertion or something It'd be dynamite yeah. right could be awesome and for and the the TSM Astralis comparison is is apt in some ways, but it is worth noting that like when that roster did form, they did have older pieces there. They you know they did have an older coach, they did have some older pieces, sure. and it was the gradual move. It was the gradual change of you know Kerrigan for a young IGL, bringing in Magic's boy, bringing in you know uh, Kerbai at times that eventually did allow them to you know succeed. So it was a mix of old and new pieces, pieces that had been there since the start, pieces that had just started you know in 2016, 2017 with like teams like Dignitas. Whereas this team, uh, they've been the the core 
far, this team has been under the same leader for their entire relevant careers. They've always been under Shuhei, even on Mao's NXT. So it could also just be the reason the team isn't getting over the hump is there's not new ideas coming to the roster. There's no, you know, metamorphosis. There's no transformation. Even though we're all gradually getting better as a team, there's no one challenging our preconceived notions of how to play the game and our preconceived, like, mental hangups. Uh, I mean... If, if if your IGL has been working with the same players for years and you guys all kind of believe, oh, you know, we all believe we could win the t- title, but we never get over the hump, you're going to start believing we can't get over this hump. It's just a natural fact. And I don't think a coach like Cycrone, who also came up in the system with them, would be able to break through that sort of this sort of mental block. It's clearly it's clearly mental that they're not oh, for players sure. are good enough to, you know, to win trophies. There's no one in this lineup that can break that mental block. The only place the players can go to break the mental block is a, to a different team under a different coach under a different IGL, and that, that's simply that what what needs to happen. It's happened yes. to other teams, and it's going to happen to this team. Like by the way, I, here's my prediction: this team will just be thought of in the future as a what if team. Like what if they had got it together? What if they had? But that's a sad thing. It'll just be that refrain, which is also why they should break up now. They've had enough time. See more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content. Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.